Okay, today we're going to look at uh, final wiring layout and fit and finish on the TRX 700X. I've got it somewhat disassembled here. I've got the rotor head removed. Uh, this is just to make it easier to move around on the bench. Tried a couple different combinations of wiring layouts and decided I like this one best. We've got the speed control mounted on top of the overall battery tray assembly with the power leads going forward. The motor leads are going aft down through the upper tray here into the frame. The easiest way to do this is to actually remove the motor, pull the motor up, route the wiring through the holes here and back up. Uh, plug the three leads in based on their color combination and as things get pushed down the wires will wind up, uh, excess length will wind up down here inside the frame. Uh, it misses the gear completely, it's well outside of the battery tray. Just seems like the best all-around wiring. Uh, there's Velcro currently holding the speed control down. When I'm all done, I'm going to take at least a single tie wrap or zip tie around here just to secure it. Uh, the fan is mounted on the ESC and plugged here into the programming port for power. This can also be used for the a line has a, a portable ESC uh, programming system that will plug in here. We're going to cover in a later video. Receiver wise, I had been using an external receiver for the Micro Beast what I had around. I finally received in my AR7700X. That's a single line capable receiver here, an SRXL receiver. So I've got this bound to my DX9 and I've got a single line here coming around through the frame to the Micro Beast on the far side. Got my remote receiver and then the single whisker antenna wraps around the front of the battery tray uh, at this point and comes around to the far side. We'll roll this over and see if we can keep everything in frame. Okay, right here, I've got the Micro Beast mounted in the lower position now. When I did an earlier video, I actually had it mounted on top of the battery frame. Uh, it wound up with the wiring a little too tight and I was afraid it was going to give me some vibration into the fly barless system. So we rerouted it down here. You notice this is the whisker for the uh, AR7700 on the far side, just giving me antenna coverage on both sides of the frame. I went ahead and used the two Align provided extensions for servos and those got heat shrink right here. This is actually the elevator and the rudder servo gives me enough length to bring the wiring around the front of the Micro Beast. That's actually the, the rudder lead right here. And the other two leads, uh, channel 2 and channel 3 for the, uh, the two forward cyclic servos, those had plenty of length the way they are. Um, excess wiring is just sort of tucked up here. I've got a piece of Velcro, a thin piece under the speed control, and it's just holding all the wiring in place right now. Um, this seems to be the neatest arrangement. The whole goal here was to have the fly barless accessible so I could see it to program it sort of out of harm's way and to make sure we did not have any excess cable uh, tension putting vibration or pulling the, the fly barless unit around in any way. So a couple other things I'm going to try to talk about here. Let's see if we can get a reasonable view of this. I actually have to stand the helicopter somewhat on its nose to see this view. We're looking at the back of the speed control right now. And you'll see there's two sets of servo wires coming out of the back of the speed control. These are provided, these are some fairly long leads provided with the kit. Over here on this side, we've got one marked minus plus R and then minus plus signal. On the viewer's right right here, minus plus R, the plus and minus is actually just a power lead that we're providing an extra um, amount of current to the, the fly barless system. These will actually get plugged into the system port. The brown and the, and the red wire get plugged into the system port on the Micro Beast. The R signal, which is actually yellow, breaks out into its own connector at the other end of the wire and that's providing RPM signal to the governor sig system on the Micro Beast. So this is going to get plugged into the RPM input on the Micro Beast. So it's a single cable at this end. At the other end it's got a connector with brown and red which is power and then yellow is broke out as an independent connector which is RPM. This side over here minus plus S this is your throttle signal. So this one will plug into the throttle channel on the Micro Beast it's providing power on red and black and it's providing 
um, the throttle signal to the fly to the ESC on the white wire. Now we're going to turn this around here, and since it's very hard to plug this in to actually see it where it's mounted on the micro beast, we're going to use the manual a little bit and take a look at pinouts here. Bear with me while I move stuff around. Okay, so when I mentioned the yellow, red, brown wire on the fly barless system are coming off the ESC, what we've got, this is the system port. This was the far end of the of the micro beast. The, the brown and the red wire are plugged in here on negative and positive to the system. That's simply providing an extra three to five amps worth of power to the fly barless system. The next pin over has a whole bunch of writing here, aux, pitch, rudder. This is normally used when you're using an external receiver. The important part here is there's an RPM signal right here. So on the bottom pin of the fly barless unit, you're going to plug in the yellow wire from the speed control. So what that's doing is it's feeding the RPM signal from the speed control into the micro beast so we can use the onboard um, governor system on the micro beast. My take on this is if we can use the, the RPM governor from the fly barless system, it's more capable of understanding changes in motor load, which will make it easier to, to manage the tail. In this configuration, the elevator channel, this pin right here is the only unused connector on the micro beast. And then finally, this one says aileron channel 5. This is actually where the throttle lead plugs in from the speed control. So it's negative and positive on the bottom, and then the upper lead is actually going to be the white wire coming from the throttle. So the, there's a single connector comes from the speed control. Uh, I mentioned plus minus S, that's the, the throttle signal coming in to the speed control. That plugs in here on the micro beast, negative positive throttle on the top. Other ones are pretty easy. Channel 1, we mentioned this in an earlier setup. Elevator servo, channel 2, left side cyclic, channel 3, right side cyclic, and channel 4 is rudder. And when we were looking at this in the actual helicopter, your view is a little bit skewed here, but this is the far side of the fly barless. This would be the rudder on the very top. Then we get the cyclic servos. The elevator uh, servo is, is a little bit further down. We eventually wind up with the throttle cable and then RPM signal and power in on the system connector. After, I said, several different layout attempts to make this thing work very well, I think this is the absolute best for the T-Rex 700X. We're going to finish putting this together over the next day, get the rotor head finally assembled and put back in and done, and this one is ready for a test flight. Uh, I'd like to especially thank Grand RC for giving me the opportunity to do these videos. Um, this has been a great project, and we're going to be doing more of these.